Another commonly asked question by many Singaporeans is that when they buy a property, should they use their CPF to finance the property or should they actually keep it inside the CPF itself and let it continue to earn interest? So for today's question, I shall be answering this question and I'll be putting up to three different scenarios for you to see. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel on YouTube and click on the alert notification. Hi. I'm James Lim, founder of the Property Plus system and today I'll be talking about using your CPF and your bank loan in order to maximize your profit margin when you purchase a prof property. Now, for CPF, you can only use it inside your ordinary account and it is used for both the down payment and also the housing loan. And upon selling that time, you have to refund or pay back this CPF of the accrued interest of 2.6% back into your CPF. Now, if you do not use your CPF inside the property, your CPF inside the CPF board will still continue to earn that 2.6% return. So therefore, the amount of CPF in the end of the next, when you sell that time, it will be fixed. So I will talk about the three different scenario. The first scenario is that I'll be using very little amount of cash, using a minimum amount of cash, while I'll be using my, uh, and I'll be taking a maximum bank loan in order to leverage maximum, and any spare cash, I'll use it for other forms of investment. The second scenario I'll be talking about is I will be taking the minimum bank loan, so I will have the lowest amount of interest. However, I'll be using both my cash and CPF to finance majority of my property. Third scenario, I will use maximum cash and CPF for, uh, sorry, I'll be using maximum cash and bank loan for my property while I do not touch my CPF and let my CPF earn the accrued interest from the CPF board. So let's look at this example. I'll be using this scenario for all three examples. The first one is that uh, in this example, the this person want to buy a one million property. I assume that he has two hundred fifty thousand of cash, and he has a CPF of maybe two hundred thousand. Okay, he's age thirty five. His income is six thousand. And the question is that should he use his CPF? Now, in scenario one, I was sharing is that he will use minimum amount of cash and CPF, while he will actually maximize his bank loan. So let's look at this scenario. Now for this scenario is that he want to buy a 1 million property. The upfront cost or the down payment is 25% of cash and CPF. Therefore, and moreover, he has to pay his buyer stamp duty. Okay. So therefore, the bank loan will be 750,000, the maximum at 1.6% over 30 years. Okay. And actually I calculate what is his monthly installment. Now, after five years, let's assume that he used the man minimum amount of cash of 50000 into his property. So, and I assume that the property grows at 2% per annum, which is something very, very low. Because uh, if you look at even last year, our, our property price actually grew by 10.9% in one year. Okay, and 2% 2 is actually a very safe margin. So, after five years, I assume that the property will be roughly $1.1 uh, the total interest that he has to pay when he sells this property so far he has been paying is 56,000 of interest so, and his outstanding loan is 648,000. Okay, so he will also be paying 26,000 of accrued interest into the CPF itself. Now, let's assume that again, he, if he has 250,000, he will only be using 50,000 for the uh, property and he 200,000 he may find other forms of investment that is maybe paying him better returns or maybe 5% and this is uh, roughly uh, uh, using it as a 5% per annum gain so after selling what will be his profit so on the left hand side you can see that at a selling price of 1.1 million I will minus off the buyer stamp duty I will minus off the um, in interest that he paid to the bank I will also minus off the uh, accrued interest that will be paying to the CPF board itself and I'll minus off the outstanding loan which means his total cash flow will come in is 344,000. Now this 344,000 he need to set the side inside the CPF which is 226,000. Therefore the cash that he will receive will be 118,000. Okay, and calculating his return of equity which is uh, your total cash profit divided by your capital 
which, which will give him a 37% per annum or 38% per annum. This is a very common number because most uh, ROE for Singapore is between 30 to 50% uh, per annum okay and assuming that if he make a five percent return of investment for his prop of uh, his investment that he's dealing with his total profit will be fifty five thousand so let's put this into perspective in his cash flow for his property on the left hand side if he put in fifty thousand his net cash that he'll be getting is three four four thousand all right or run and for his investment at time if he put in two hundred thousand he will get back a profit of fifty five thousand so let's put this into perspective now the total cash he start off with is two hundred fifty thousand okay the cpf he start off with is two hundred thousand so after five years his total cash after combining these two together he'll be earning close to four hundred thousand of cash all right and his cpf total will be two to six thousand how about scenario two now for scenario two i'll be using the most amount of cash and cpf while i'll keep my bank loan to the minimum so i will not be leveraging so much on the bank loan because i do not want to pay so much interest to the bank so when we do our calculation that time, again, because of his cash and down payment, I uh, realized that the total loan that he can take from the bank is only 574000 which is only 57%, okay? And the total interest that he's paying is 42000 instead of just now 56000 all right? So the total uh, outstanding loan after five years will be 496000 So what is his profit? Again, the same formula. I took his total profit selling price, minus off the buyer stamp duty, minus off the interest that he paid to the bank, minus off the CPF accrued interest that he paid to CPF board, and I minus off his outstanding loan, and therefore I work out that his total profit will be five o of total cash flow will be five o nine thousand. Okay? And minus off the money from the CPF, his total cash in hand that he will receive is two eight three thousand. So when I calculate this that time, because the total cash is two eight three thousand divided by 250,000 of the amount of cash that he put in, therefore his return of equity is much lower at only 2.6%. So let's look at his cash flow. He put in 250,000, he will get back a cash of 509,000, okay? So after five years, his total cash will be 283,000 on hand and CPF is 226,000. Now, how about my scenario three? Now, for my scenario three, I'll be using the maximum cash and bank loan. While CPF money, I will not touch. I will just put inside the CPF board itself and continue to allow it to earn that 2.6% interest. So, again, same thing. I do the same calculation again. Uh, bank loan, I'm taking 750000 The total interest you have to pay uh, to the bank is 56000 over five years. So if I have to look at his profit, okay, uh, after selling off minus off everything, don't forget uh, he, will, he will not be paying the accrued interest for CPF because CPF will be still be earning that, that interest. His total profit will be 370000 and putting in the CPF aside, he will actually have uh, a cash of 370000 because again, the why I never minus off at all? Because the 226,000 is from CPF, which he did not touch at all. So he'll receive a cash of 370,000. And the total return equity will be 29%. So let's put this into perspective again. His starting cash is 250,000. At the end, he will get 370,000 back on cash, while his CPF will earn 26,000. So let me summarize to you. This is the most important data that I've actually been rambling on just now. So let's look at our first scenario. Our first scenario, you will pay a higher installment of 2,600, okay? The in therefore, you add up all the interest, the interest will definitely be higher of 56,000, okay? However, the total cash on hand will be 144, which is the cash from the property, plus his investment, which is roughly around 255,000, okay? The best is that for the first scenario is that if he is a savvy investor, okay, his return of equity from the property will be more than 37%, okay, while his total cash profit that you get is 68000 plus the whatever profit from his other forms of investment. Now, if we look at the second scenario where he wants to pay the lowest amount of interest, this will be beneficial for people who are actually who want to play very, very safe and do not want to pay a lot, lot of interest. However, uh, although you save out close to uh, 14,000 of interest, 
However, if you look at the amount of cash on hand, you will actually receive less cash on hand, okay? And the return of investment will be much lesser at only 2.6%. Okay, but the lastly, last one is that uh, for people who don't use your CPF and prefer to keep your CPF inside the bank, okay, uh, sorry, inside the CPF board, you will still pay the installment, all right, and uh, f you will still earn a lower rental of, equi of equity of 29%, which is like 8% lesser than your rental equity for your first scenario, okay, and your total cash on hand is actually more or maybe roughly the same as your scenario one. So what does it mean? So should you put your, should you use your CPF money or not? Now, let me put across this scenario, this summary for you. The first one is that always leverage and take maximum bank loan. Okay, the reason is very simple. Because the bank interest rate right now is very low at 1.6% or even lower at 1.1%. So you should maximize this amount of bank loan and when, if one day interest rate were to reach very high, like maybe 2.3 to 2.6%, that is very close to CPF board, you should be actually uh, paying out more to the bank and reduce your total bank loan, okay? The second tip I'd like to give to you is that, is of course, besides able to take bank loan, you should let your CPF earn the interest because if CPF were to earn 2.6% return, and the bank loan will be to be a negative, maybe 1.6%, uh, your over net, you are still earning is 1% more. Now, the thing is that if you know how to invest or if you know where to park your cash, okay, and if you park your cash into an investment vehicle that gives you more than 5% return, you should be looking at scenario one already, where the amount of cash that you earn will be more than your scenario three while you put your money inside CPF board. However, if you have no knowledge of investing into, into uh, other forms of investment vehicle, I would rather advise you is that try to use maximum of your cash uh, to pay up for the property while taking the maximum bank loan and let your CPF, don't touch your CPF and let your CPF earn the interest. So that's all I have it for you. I hope you have learned something new. I hope that you should always use take a maximum bank loan and use minimum CPF unless you can find another investment vehicle for your cash. And that's all I have for you. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up, click on our subscribe button. Thank you so long and bye.